goes air until it gets cool and then like feels like that. room temperature and then it can cool it. Hey, right. it was so winter yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> right. Two good days and everyone wants air conditioning. All righty, so we'll call to order the meeting of May 20th. First order of business is the approval of um, the May 13th minutes. Uh, folks have a chance to read them? I yep. Have. Are okay with them? Any changes? Or? No changes for me. I'm okay. All right, so by consensus, we will approve the community input. You come on up. Oh. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I am Representative Wendy Chase Brawlingsburg. <laughs> and actually, why I'm here is long overdue. I wanted to talk to you about trying to have a little space somewhere on the town website that I could put some updates of what's going on in the state when we have uh, sessions and bills that are passed. Not big, and you're welcome to edit, and we talked about that. I'm not going to put too much, but I would also like to make sure that our um, information is there so that the residents and constituents do know how to contact. If there's any questions, I want to be able to offer that if anybody would like to come in to see a house session or a particular bill, that to let me know that and I can have them put on the list of guests and have their names announced before session. So with your approval, I would like to start doing that. We have session on the 23rd of this month, so this week. And once things are, we're, we're in crossover right for now, which means that we're doing the um, Senate bills and the Senate has the House bills. It's kind of a different time to start it, but at least if we're moving forward we already know what the governor wants to do and what he doesn't want to veto. And, um, so it, it would just be good, I thought, to let people know what's going on. That's why I'm here representing everyone. I think Does it's a great idea. I think, great? so you want to just make sure, I mentioned to you yesterday when I saw you right mm -hmm. there, just make sure it's nonpartisan, like sure. the bills we're working on. Yep. If you have an opinion or you want to let me know what you think I should be doing, you know, your contact input, I think it's great. It's long, uh, it's, um, I wish it were a resource that were around when I was doing it. So it's a good way to yeah. let people know, and so they want to communicate with you. It's a good way to do it. Is this information that you have on <coughs> your like, state website, and we can just put Yes, it actually, well, see, that's the thing. You can go on to, and I'm going to put that link that you can okay. go right to, New Hampshire's Gov. Dot org, and you can look up the Senate side, you can look up the House, you can find out a lot of information there, see what bills are coming up, when they're going to be heard, where they've already heard. Senate bills already have um, an audio of testimony, which I actually listen to when we get them because it helps me with decisions and knowing who's really passionate about what they're doing and who doesn't come to follow the bill, you kind of wonder why. So yes, I'd like to, the first one anyway, list all that information so everybody has it, they know where they can look if they want to on their own time. If they have questions, they're free to contact myself or uh, Cecilia or Jerry, and then we also have this cat, who's our other rep. People do write. I do get information. I do have um, yeah, town. Um, constituents wanting to know information or asking me how I'm going to vote on things, and, and that's what it's all about. We can have that conversation and I know who we are and where they find us. So, how much room is in the in the web page that she can utilize? Oh, I don't think that we are anywhere near our storage capacity. It's more about um, I think a simple design that makes that kind of information easy to find and tells people that it's there um, and is easy to update. But I would say um, links are nice because then you know there is no storage with links. They just get you know information gets directed elsewhere. Um, well, we, we can talk about, like, sure. Well, my point was that, you know, for small items of interest and links and stuff, definitely from Facebook, but if she wanted to, like, have a letter go out quarterly or something, 
couldn't she send that through the town? Of, um, we totally could have. We could absolutely. You know, if you wanted to be a little more um, uh, detailed, because you sure. may not have the room on the on the web page. Okay. okay. You know. Well, maybe. it would go to the web page, or you know, so. Oh, as an attachment, though, not as a. Well, all of the emails that go out end up as part of the news blog automatically, like, and, and we're trying yeah. to work out a different okay. way to yeah. sort that, yeah. but it becomes part of the news reel. But it's kind of a step that you could take if you choose okay. to. Right. Um, if you. Well, things are wrapping up, so it would be good to, to. I would like to let all the constituency and everyone know where we are, what we've been doing. We're coming right. towards the end of the first part of the session so that we're going to now be working on committees and there's a lot going on through the summer. There's also a lot of events that are going on in Concord that people may be interested in. Like they just had the um, the, um, the police officers uh, memorial event and a lot of town was shut down and, and the police and fire were there and was a parade. I mean things like that that people may be not aware of that are listening to Channel 9. Yeah. That I could just say, hey, by the way, real just quick things. Here's what's going on. Right. If you want to come in and I mean, there should you be and a H had a big barbecue last mm -hmm. week, and you know, that type of thing. So on here, so there's like service director, other useful exactly. items. They, on the town website, oh, the town one. There should be a link, we you know, a or a list like you know who your select board members are, who your oh, right. planning board. It should I list you know, know who the, our right. legislators are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Be so yeah. if people want to okay. know. Yeah. Make sure it's on here. I see everything. Oh, yeah, so. Okay, so we need to add that. That would be nice. I mean, that's it not would be nice because people generally, I think, don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And they certainly wouldn't know how to contact you. And that, I think, is important. Very, I get you. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I try to go on and I'm all in certain happenings, but again, I. Well, that only hits. Well, no, it's not official. It's right. just a no. It's only who happens to be right. on that, and yeah. I go, oh well, maybe word of mouth, somebody's going to say something. So this, right. like, you know, I've been talking to somebody about it, and we thought yeah. this may be a, a yeah, good way of good really idea. connecting mm -hmm. and uh, finding out what's going on. But if you have more to say in a particular sentence, yeah, I think I would can send it to you. Sure. And you just there's something you yeah, is really going on or yeah. wrapping up, wrapping up yeah. the end of the session. Yeah, so and people know how things went. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Well, we'll work on it, but thank you for the um, yeah. go ahead and I'll figure out what Great to do. Great idea. Um, so if you want to give me a call at some point, okay. we can talk sit through. Down. I think in concept we're all in favor of it. We just yeah. need to see what yeah. you want. Concept what's important, and then when you when you have a chance and it's a good time, okay. Um, okay. we can sit down and chat or you can give me a call Great. and we'll talk about different options. Yeah, and for I can show you some of the information that I would like think would be important, and then we can decide to do that. We can figure out how, how to best disseminate it, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, is it just a blast to the... Kind of like we do for like don't forget to register your dog or exactly. whatever, or or is it and just it a section on the website? Yeah, it could different, be different, right? Exactly. Depending on the information. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good use. It would be good to see. Also, I'm I'm anxious about the feedback to see you know right. if we do hear. I mean, maybe no one's interested. I don't think well, that that's the case. But mm -hmm. even if there's you know 15, 20 people that are interested, that's why I was elected. That's what I'm there for to represent, and I want to make sure I have that opportunity. It would be exciting to see what, um, how so. it would change, um, uh, how, how often you hear from people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you that. Very I will be in touch and um, we'll, we'll work it out and see what we need. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too. Any other community input tonight so far? All right. George, you want to come up? We'll take care of uh, the highway part. And uh, talked with Mrs. Uh, Willie from the Colts. Okay. Oh, yeah. And they are going to purchase the Colts with other means. Uh, the rest of the road? Yeah. Or? The, the, the Colts that need to be fixed and then mm -hmm. on that section. Okay. The that will not. The, the driveway one in front of that Colts. Yeah. And they get a couple of driveways that go in the fields that need Colts and they're going to buy them and we'll put them in the corner by when they drop them in place. So we don't have to worry about that. Then. Okay. No. Well, that's good. Then. And they'll cut the check. It's not going to move to the town. I'll have the check with them. And they'll be able to load the pipe right to the site. And talk to the distributor. And so that's the one we were just talking about. That was last week.
week's uh, the Sligo. The Sligo that one that we weren't sure if we we're going to be able to get down or what, but they're going. No, we're still not sure if we're going to get the commit in time to do the other part. But we know cross COVID. We may end up putting a cross COVID back in the road. All right. On the catch basin across it because we ain't going to be able to go without having that. All right. Where the road's be. All right. Eliminate the top one, eliminate one, and we'll eliminate the second one. Okay. But still, I mean, what? Yeah, I suppose I just get one off. I talked with Will about the issues this way. Okay. The town apparently took the COVID out there, went in front of the farm and made the cross COVID okay. because of an issue when they used the whole milk. They okay. They used to crush the COVID all the time. Oh, it's too heavy. Before the roads were paved. I um, see. Right. I got you. So so and that's why they went that direction. Right. Went across the road and okay. crossed the road instead of. Gotcha. So. And there was another cover that the town took out when they did the show, on the show. And yeah. they'd like to have back in, so they were going to buy that one. So they did it to the way they have the town. So they so will not take care of that one too. So they were going to the town. There's no end. There will be no other covers needed on even the other section because I don't think today most of them are already on a downhill slope sort of one thing. Okay. But she needs to be at her driveway that she's purchasing. Well, it's nice that we're not in Fox, so that's, that's a plus. No, nice. well said she's more than well. And they understand why, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, right. you know, they want to have the problem solved too. But we don't right. need further issues. Right, right. So, but that's all I have. That's uh, fair enough. Well, I went down the road yesterday from the bear to silver. What a challenge that is. I mean, it's I can feel like it really slow. Yeah, you have to. I mean, it's tough, isn't it? But it really that's the other is the road that have. needed to be the priority. I know. I've, I've heard that from a number of the residents. The concern they have is when it's paved, it's going to be a racetrack. Well, um, that's possible. And, and, and well, maybe. But, but, I mean, it still has to be fixed. I mean, it still has to be fixed. You could be grind it. You could take the hot top out, make it a dirt road, and... No. And you're going to buy greater, so what are you going to do? Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it, no, it and the long run, it's much more expensive to maintain yeah, it. Right? Yeah. So. yeah. So I've seen some of your work, and it looks. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. I was down the other day, too. Yeah. The big COVID, and I was thinking of changing, but we found it's a cement COVID. It was fine. It was very. Oh, good. Okay. I mean, it was under. We couldn't right. see it when we were down there. Right. And there's a metal one next to it, so we just cleaned that whole area off the other day. Okay. So the water's flowing good down there, good. and we're starting to see some dish work. Okay. okay. I'll talk to them. I, like, talk, like I said, I talked to the COVID company today. They were okay with us getting a check from them to get the COVID, so that was going down there. So it would be nothing. Well, it takes care of one of the things on there. How about, uh, so we haven't heard back from uh, uh, um, Royal Tanner about the DDS permit then? Well, then I'll tell you what I think. There's nothing to talk about. Right. I'm going to try to call him and see if we can. It's possible to just get that. I'd rather keep it on one side of the road. Right. And I mean, it's, it's possible without getting to the commit part of it. Because, I mean, we're not changing that. We're just taking the water from this side to so put it where it should be going in the first place. Right. You know, and, but it's interfering with the existing color. That right. So I was, uh, maybe he can push something on him. I don't know. You know, these guys deal with these people all the time. It's a lot more than you. I don't know if it's worth a phone call. How, how is the road going to be a two-lane road where those jersey areas are? It's we're back. We're what's we're that? Back. So we can fix that. But is it going to be two, two, two cars? Two lanes now. Oh, well, not really. It is, but you... you <laughs> maybe you have a car the size of mine, maybe, but... No, I mean, if... They, we're still going to move them back. If we took the barriers out of there, we're going to gain two feet. On each side? Yeah. You know, okay. guardrails don't take the space of the Jersey Barriers, and the Jersey Barriers don't allow the snow to go underneath them, so we have that cluster of snow in the middle. Yeah. So we can seriously think about the guardrails, and whether we build them ourselves and put them in, yeah. or whatever. Okay. But that's it definitely. So it's definitely going to be. A you know, I mean, they didn't have any guardrails down here before. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. that's a tough spot not to have something. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put it down for sure. You know, so it should be definitely. The basic inexpensive guardrails there, that, you know, yeah. but the Jersey Barriers take up so much space. They're two feet wide at the base, okay. right. and you're losing, you know, you're losing three feet of road. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the ones on the right going towards Bear Road, 
I'm actually still on the edge of our car. We can move them back. I still the other direction. Right. We can move them back a little bit. The other side, we've got plenty of room we could drag them back if we had to, but I prefer not to use the Jersey Bear because we don't have to. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's something. It's definitely tight there, though. And that was in, I, I think that's in, you know, I, the $6,000 we made at the price I got on guardrails, but I'm waiting for Chris to get and said, there's a company we probably get cheaper or we can put them in ourselves. Any other questions for George? You covered both the things we have on our list. Very no, no, no. I mean, things are going good. I mean, we're getting tough time. We're trying to get the mowing done tomorrow in the town, and we have a chance to touch. So, it's raining, so we've yeah, had a couple of and hot days, and, and now. And I haven't heard from Chris about bathing because of the weather. Right, of course. So we're finally getting delayed. That's okay. That's helping you a little. Yeah. I'm supposed That's to have that. some nasty weather later on in the week, too, right? So, sorry. <laughs> Next week, so far, looks clear, but we can tell, really. They can't yeah. tell us tomorrow, so, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. No, everything's been good. Uh, we made some pretty good money with aluminum cans. So, mm -hmm. just to give you a heads up. That's good. We've taken two loads over there, and, you know, we've taken 500 bucks back each time, so we're close to it. Certainly better than costing us money. Better than putting it in the trash. And putting in the trash, for sure. Mm -hmm. I agree mm -hmm. with that, for sure. So, yeah, that's so far. Uh, I have one applicant for a position at the transportation, and I'm just waiting on uh, that. I haven't talked to Edward about it, so I just got to thank him here in town on Pine Street. So, we had forward after the whole after all. Okay. Great. Anything else before we sign? No. All right. I don't have anything either, though. All right. We don't see you before uh, we want to see you next week. It's a holiday, so I have a great time. I'll check it out, too. My wife's been operating on the third. Okay. So, okay. I'll probably be. Of course. Most of that week. Okay. But uh, I'll, I'll still be available by phone. I'm sure a speedy recovery. Oh, yeah, she's been putting this off long enough. She's ready. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, have sure a good night, George. Take care. So Bob was coming in, he said, right? Mark was here. Did you not have any? No, uh, he has a purchase order. Oh, okay. So we'll deal with that afterwards. Then. Alrighty, so we'll go to town admin then. Newsletter content. Is there a copy of it here somewhere that I need? copy there. Um, it's somewhere not formatted yet. It's just about what it has to say. And do you have any edits about how it says what it says and what it says? I have a couple of issues. Um, why did my phone number change on my two? <laughs> Where are you going now? It's the town number instead of my home number on the Family Fund Day and the Ron Side Education Foundation. You want your phone number? Well, I don't have a voicemail here or anything. Well, no, I don't. So we can either that or you can put my email, my town email, if you want. But either one. But not, I mean, 251. Well, so, be, do you want yes, me to know? Yeah, I mean, it's all over the place anyway. 603-742-8226. So on both of them. And I thought Philly had one election this year. We only have one election. Well, what is November 6th? Oh, well, that's... It, it's gone. It's gone. Thank you. Uh -huh. You're checking this with that blue one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Okay. Let's just be on. Yeah. Oh, it's on my copy I made. Oh, I, the, I don't have it on my copy. Oh, I was going to say, it's on my copy. It's a new one. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yep. Work well, because well, I did my highlighting, right, so I wouldn't get yeah. All right, what do we got here? Okay, so cool. Let's go down. 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 Let's go One other thing on the Brown State Education Fund. Oh, maybe it's already fixed. Let me make sure. I do want to get my working copy. Did I bring the arts to the children of Rollinsburg? Got it. Okay.
just is something on there. Either. Yeah, it, it's um, under the Education Foundation is to bring the arts, with an S, the arts, the arts, but to the children of Rollinsburg. Yeah. 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 The arts. The arts. Yeah. I know. I can't find them, the rest of that sentence. <laughs> it will come. It's right there in there, but it didn't get printed. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's so, overlapped with something else, oh, okay. so it's got blacked so, out, so okay. it's there. All right. Well, that's fair enough. All right. I'm going to that on the front page. Don't worry about it. Okay. Stay. Okay. What is it? 
Right here. Right here. Yeah. Well, what moved to page two? Oh, there it is. It's right there. I see it. It's there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But it moved to the top, actually, but you don't know that. Okay. Putting the Tetris pieces together. <laughs> right. Oh, good for you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Not easy to do layout, so. Yeah. That's great. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All righty. Um, okay. Space needs community draft charge. The shared facilities director. Um, do you want to do it? I'm not sure remember what the email said, and I'm drawing it wrong, so. That's quite all right. So. I had a splitting, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, no, I'm just, mm. I met with the superintendent and um, Mr. Cordier, the facilities director for the school. It was a great meeting. They're excited about moving forward. They're very open to the idea of sharing resources um, in terms of this position or really in terms of other things. If there's a way that we can do things more efficiently, they're open to that, and that was really good to hear. Um, so in terms of the long-range plan, I discussed the option of sharing the position by a certain percentage of his salary and benefits, the cost of his position. Um, they're open to that um, for the goal of one day having somebody who's charged with taking care of all of the town buildings and making sure that we have a plan and are maintaining properly all of our town buildings. Um, that would be something to evolve over time and of course is subject to their board's approval and this board's approval and we don't know how much that would cost. And, so um, by, by way of trying to evaluate this building to some degree, we will also learn how much time he thinks, you know, what, what split might be an appropriate split. However, if that's a 50-50 split, we know that that's not going to be accomplished probably in a first year. It, it would be something to work toward. Um, you all know that the school has a different fiscal calendar and, and plans their budget further out than the town does. Right. So there's that challenge. So both parties would have to judge budget for it and then it's subject to the current boards at that time to continue that or start that or, or whatever. So that's, that's a ways away, but um, it's good to know that he's open to that um, in that position. He also said though that um, he is planning his own retirement within the next years or so, um, and that's not really firm, but um, it may not be him specifically who's fulfilling this function right. for us right. if indeed this happens. Um, but he's open to it and the superintendent supports the idea, and so that's really the first step um, as far as sharing the position um, in a, in a long-term way. So as far as this building is concerned, um, we, we, we had a long discussion about what the goal was and how to get there, and what we determined is that there are a lot of moving parts. The, the, there, there's a lot to this building. There, um, we have a couple of different reports that relay some information. We have some information, not a lot of information. Um, and, and so what exactly were we looking for? And so. Um, we talked about trying to answer questions for the voters so that they would feel informed enough to make a decision right. um, when there's a, a decision to be made. And so um, the first step, so, so part, of the, part of the problem at this point is that he doesn't have a whole lot of time. He's very busy with the school. He's not just um, managing the, um, the maintenance there, but he's also doing the maintenance there. They, they don't have a lot of maintenance and staff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the eventuality, should we share the position, the money that we can take for them would help them hire staff that would that could do some of the maintenance and free him up to do more of the, um, the planning kind of um, evaluation chores. But um, because they don't have a whole lot of staff there at this point, he's limited in how much time he can spend here. But they want to help, and so we are going to take this piecemeal. And so 
what they've offered for this first step is that Mr. Fortier can spend a day here and we could talk about what we know. Um, we can talk about the Bangor report and what information's in there, um, what we know that's been done to this building since then. Mm -hmm. And then he could spend the day looking around the building and coming up with a task list for us of um, things that need to be evaluated and looked into. Um, and then he would try to find us costs for those things. For example, he, he suggested we should have an asbestos study done on this building to determine if there's any asbestos um, and, and how much would it cost to remediate the asbestos. So there are a lot of pieces um, looking at it from functionality. You, there are a lot of different you know, safety, different ways to um, evaluate the, the, the building. And asbestos is certainly one of them because the agent building. So he would make a, in that day, the goal would be to create a task list um, and, and he may or may not get as far as putting price tags on each of the task lists for us. And so we'll take that information, bring it back to the board, and, and see about next steps for his time. So for this first day, um, they can handle, they, they will donate his time for the day if we can wait for school to be out in approximately four weeks. If this process is going to take some time, right. if you noting that if you want to move this along a bit sooner than that, then he could potentially come within the next week or two. To do that, because school's not out yet, um, they would like for us to pay for our custodian to go over there for the day. So to, to, to have a body. Yeah, to keep the backlog at a minimum for, for the loss of time for the day. So, but that's just this first step. Um, because he's busy over there, they're not sure how much we need, how long it's going to take to right. get the answers we need, or and, and how much they can spare him. So we're going to just take a step at a time. Um, we may get to the point where they're looking for more um, compensation time from our custodian. And I spoke with him about that, and he's willing to make his schedule work and try to. He's open to that. He's open. Our custodian. Um, Mr. Fogarty is open to working with us in the school. He already fills in over there. Okay. So, yeah, so he works for them sometimes. They have a good relationship. He knows how to do the job. So it could work out nicely, but there will be some expense at some point, depending on how much time is required. To get the so if we wait four weeks, they can, um, he'll go in the first day or so. Right. And do that, of course. To wait four weeks, and he says he can't do it, or it's more than what he can handle, or he feels comfortable doing, and we wasted four weeks. So he will get us it. some answers, you know, and, and some answers is better than no, no information at all. It, it just may not be enough that, you know, well, we it's can not have him come over and we pay, um, we could go over for a day, and how much could that possibly? Yeah, it's it's you know minimal, it's very it's minimal. It's minimal compared to what it would cost to hire somebody to get the information. So you you're confident that he's the right person to do this? I'm confident that the price tag is workable. You know, you can you know, certainly you can pay for more comprehensive, better information. I'm, I'm not, you know, I know that he can lend us some information we don't have, but are we going to end up with the full picture and all the answers that you want in order to put something on the ballot for March? I'm not clear if he's got that expertise, and I'm not clear if we've got enough time of his to figure that out. But your alternative is going to be really right. expensive. Much more expensive. Right, right. So, explain the compensation part of it again. So How there, that would work. So, so we're in a step by step, and you're approving every step of this. Okay. So, yeah. so we'll keep revisiting this. But at this point, we have a day for free if you can wait, or for Richard. No, I'm not talking about that part. Of so that. going forward. Going forward after that one day of bringing him in here and and he and um, having paying part of his salary. How will that work? 
Are you talking about like initially for assessing this building? Maybe my concern will help you understand what my question All right, is. Okay. So my concern is that if we're if they're and I'm just using numbers because I don't know what he makes, okay? So say he, you know, he makes hundred thousand dollars. I know that's not what he makes, but if he makes hundred thousand dollars and we're gonna pay a quarter of his expense. So twenty five thousand. So is that twenty five thousand going to be in our budget or are we going to have to pay them to um, offset that twenty five thousand? So do you okay. see where I'm going? Yeah, where you're going? I, I, I was wondering wondering if you're who talking about now or later. No, so, later, down the road. So that's all open for discussion. Okay. But I would I would say that it's not just a hundred thousand dollars, it's a hundred thousand dollars plus benefits and payroll taxes. Uh, yeah. A percentage well, of that. Well it's his whole package, yeah. Which is why well, it's it might going be a hundred thousand maybe. Which yeah. is why it's going to be a growing percentage over time as we can move it into our budget and slowly increase it into something that we know is workable. And, and so maybe we'll find that it's too expensive and it's not workable, or maybe yeah. we'll keep the percentage really low even though we need more of his time than that. Yeah. You know, he's got a certain level of expertise. Maybe, you know, our the job description that we would hold for him would be much narrower than we would really want it to be if that's the, you know. You may also find that, that having, him, having him over here a few times just doing the cursory work that you don't want to go forward with the with a long-term plan, yeah. right? I mean, that's more of a next-year budget issue, right? Than right, and, and so depending how fast we can do something and how much we can learn and understand what his capacity is for us, I don't want to sign up for something that I'm going to be obligated to right. pay a percentage to the school district that I don't have control out of negotiations of what he gets paid. You're right, and this is going to be—that's where I'm concerned. This is going to be complicated at the least, and perhaps not workable because yes. right. he's going to make whatever salary he's going to make. And what if this board changes and decides that we don't want to do that at all? Right. And but I don't know that this board can obligate that board in that way. Right. Maybe there's a contract that supersedes it, and then that makes it workable. Yeah. You know, I think there's a way to make it work if there's a will, but yeah. for sure there's some stuff to be yeah. worked out about it. Yeah, especially you know. in three years when the plans start to retire and they have to fulfill that position again, you know, we want to make sure that we're not stuck on a salary because it could be 25% higher well, than he's getting depending on who they get. Well, right. You know, depending on they're hiring. So, so I think that's part of maybe it's a, you know, some kind of agreement with the school that, you know, maybe we have something on the interview committee and a vote not hiring or, you know, there's some other say about we're not willing to spend more than, yes, it's 25%, but we wouldn't want the seller to be more than that. So, you know, I think those, they're absolutely valid concerns mm -hmm. and we're going to talk a lot more before this goes anywhere. Yeah. It's just, um... They wouldn't be able to do it this year, right? Because that's the of, uh, the well, he can do it for next free for, in the summer. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and if we need to, we have an offset. That's as much as 2019 right. is going to do. And right. I agree with that. Right. But, but entering into that, that's, all yeah. the things you're asking about, I think there's a much larger conversation. The, well, budget, it, so. well, because you're dealing with two, dis two different yes. um, authority, authority people um, and two different budgets and stuff. I would much rather see it in our budget, what we feel we can spend on it, and then make that available to him or paying the district what we feel we can at his rate, you know, but not to say that we will pay, you know, a quarter of yeah, it. Yeah, it may something. not be a percentage. It, it, right. it may have to only be what we feel this year we can do, you know? Absolutely, okay. which is why, you know, I, I said percentage, but maybe it's not, maybe we're not going to be thinking about it in terms of a percentage, maybe yeah. we're thinking about it in terms of a number of hours, which of course relates to a percentage, but yeah. the point is that it would be small to start, mm -hmm. and, and maybe it would just be for one year in order to do a full assessment of all the buildings and come up with a, a preventative, preventative maintenance mm -hmm. plan everywhere. You know, but the goal, like to my mind, is to eliminate department heads who have specific expertise from having to determine 
how old the boiler is and what it needs for maintenance, which is not their expertise, so that we can really get much better at and have regular maintenance, but really know what our assets are and know what needs to be repaired when and has, have somebody implement a plan so that if nothing else the department has no to change the filters every three months mm -hmm. or something. I mean I, I, I'm all for doing this but I think this building is definitely the priority. I think the other the other two buildings um, maybe not this year. Not Just, this year. To yeah, be clear, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry if I, I don't know. didn't maybe introduce not, that really no, well. No, but no. yes, those are concepts for budgeting down the road, years down yeah. the road okay. with goals. Okay. For this year, Which definitely for 19, we we're talking about this, this building. Yeah. yeah, if you want to move forward on uh, other plans for this facility, mm -hmm. uh, I think this it is, should be working. Yeah. Um, those, a lot of the stumbling block the points the last time around when people were asking questions about what are we doing with this building, yep. Yep. that we didn't have a concrete plan for, so I think it was right. serving in the long run. So, but. Yeah, sure. So I definitely think that whatever plans we have for here will get us going. And then, you know, then the next year if we can add a little bit of time for... The other buildings are so much smaller and so much newer than this. Right, so, right. so their their needs aren't. It's more about what you have in there that needs to be, like you say, your your boilers or um, whatever uh, um, hot water tanks or whatever there is. You know, uh, roofs. You know, yes. those kind of things this that we need the, to look at. Bigger, yeah. But this is the bigger picture. Okay. So, so the decision that needs to be made: Do we want to wait for four weeks or have? Um, Mr. Fogarty, the Fs, Mr. Fs, um, uh, come in for each other. So, I mean, I think we can wait four more weeks. I mean, we've waited this long. So, I mean, what's four more weeks? I, I could go either way, to be honest. Yeah. I, I mean, if they need, yeah, know. Mr. Fogarty, he certainly can go over there for a couple hours or whatever. I don't know what they need. You know, but I'm trying to think. Well, Richard's willing to help out when he needs to help out with so we appreciate that. So. Yeah. But I would say we can... If you want to wait? So we wait. wait. Yep. I guess we'll wait. I don't, well, I don't see the need not to, but if you, I, I'm good either way. Either okay. way so. yeah, I mean, the only thing that I would caution is that you're, it's another four weeks where we're waiting to... But I, mean, I get that it's already May, so almost June, so... Right. So you know, I get it. It's when school gets out, which is the third week of June. Third week of June. June. Yeah. I mean, so. Okay. Alrighty then, so we will table that for now then, until June. But you'll talk to them. Yeah. Yes, okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, SRPC visit. Um, so the Stratford Regional Planning Commission Executive Director would like to speak with us. Yes. Would like to come speak with us either on July 1st or July 15th to go over um, services, um, how the commission can be helpful to us and where uh, they could use our help, um, what date seems to be better for folks. These are the two dates that they suggested? They suggested those two dates. I think that they would be open to, you know, completely different time frame. I just, you know, those, they reached out with those dates, but I think if you want something else, you can certainly talk about something. I think July 1st is um, the 4th of July week, which I don't know what my plans are yet, so I'm not sure, but I would go for the 15th, just to get it in the 4th of the line. 15th. Are we meeting that week? Like, what day is 4th of the line? It's Thursday. Are we meeting that week? Okay, it's too long. Alright. But I, mean, I would say we're in that week. And just go for the 15th. Yeah, it's a big 15th. Let them know. Um, let them know. Thank you. Um, uh, also, though, so folks are, are thinking about it, we should put a call out on our, um, like we do for openings on boards, other boards and commissions. We are entitled to two commissioners on the Stratford Regional Planning uh, Commission. Uh, we only have one at the moment. Um, so, we want to put that out. So folks know that there's a vacancy if they want to step up and volunteer for it, we can do that. Did we put, did we put something out for the budget committee vacancy? I'm working on that with John. It's not out yet. Okay. Yeah, well, at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
or whenever. Okay. Um, Eversource proposal. So Eversource has made a proposal, or their their contractor has made a proposal to us. Uh, we have heard back from the municipal association, and they tell us it's a gray area, and that towns have done both. They've either gone through their town meeting or they've um, they've gone um, the route of um, it's already in their budget, has already paying those rates. It's not a new thing. Um, it has been challenged. So. I did reach out. Yes, that, that's correct. They also suggested for more clarity that I reach out to yeah, yeah. the Department of Revenue. And I have done that. Our advisor is willing to look at the contract language when we get it, okay. if that makes you all more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But she has likewise seen people, you know, <laughs> because it's in the operating budget and you can cover it in the operating budget, there's not really a risk of putting the town on the hook for some kind of big balance or future payment because you're already covering them in your operating budget. So I will I will get the contract. Um, I've, I've already reached out about the contract and he didn't respond and I think that's because um, he reached out about the streetlight bills. So we got him some streetlight bills and you will get a proposal for streetlights street lights if you well. want to include those as yeah, well. Yeah, that's a big ticket item. Because too. that is a very big ticket item. That would be fantastic. That's like a that's a thirty six thousand dollar budget line mm -hmm. that we could do significantly. Yeah, right. Great. So um that would help. I'll let you know when I get the contract what she says about it. Okay, so we'll put that I hate to say it again, but we'll table that then until we hear back from uh -huh. the, uh, uh, the contractor, thank you. Uh, recreation positions. We have some new folks hired tonight? We do. All right. Summer rec starts on what day? Coming up, right? Oh, it's on here. <laughs> it's in the letter. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, June 24th. Yes. Okay, so. For eight weeks. All right. Summer up. Uh, all right. So, do you want to? Um, you, I, we're not going to sign these, but we're going to approve them. The reason why is because... Is there a typo it, on it? No, it, uh, it doesn't contain the words that um, you may hire depending on your... Background um, check. Rec background check. So we want to make sure that that's added on. Um, but I believe we'll be okay with any So we can revise it and you can uh, And then I'll have it up there. Well, I could actually sign it. Yeah, we can change it. Doesn't it doesn't say the chair. Oh, so you can sign it. That's fine. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll just need to vote to We'll just vote votes. that we'll, we'll sign them um, after they, um, they add that clause. That's All it. right. So. Oh, okay. So do, you want, do you want to do the motion then? For, if you're um, doing this package, you won't. Unless you want to vote on the subject. Um, we have a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to um, uh, offer Samantha. Well, how do you say her last name? Mestieri. Mestieri as the uh, position of Camp Raleigh Assistant Director. Trisha Del Grosso. Yes. For the position of Team Camp Director, Thomas Riley in the position of Camp Counselor, and Melanie Kent for the position of Camp Raleigh Director. Yeah, this is yeah. Yes. Um, all of them have been um, interviewed, well, um, management positions are interviewed by Caroline and myself as well, and we've interviewed and support um, these positions. I'll second that. Any other discussion? And um, we already hired the assistant director. No, no, no hired any of them as we have it as counselors. Um any other discussion? Question, right? All right, so all those in favor of hiring the uh, names already outlined by please say aye. 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 aye opposed? All right, so all right. please. I will take those back, Perfect. get them modified, yeah. and then sign yes. them. Happy to have you sign off. Okay. Off. All right. Chief, come on up. If not, I'll just keep rambling on about building purposes. Good evening. I have a couple quick questions. I English, should say. Uh, let's start with one, yes. The first, I have purchase order number 1680 to watch guard. 
for $5,020 that will come out of a equipment line item, and that's to replace the in cruiser digital camera for the new vehicle. And that, that was an anticipated expense this year to replace that. Are you ready, sir? You said that was yeah. anticipated? It was anticipated, yes. Um, I'll move purchase order 1680 to watch guard for $5,020 for the uh, in cruiser digital uh, video. Second. So moved and seconded. No any discussion. We established that it's already an anticipated expense, so it's been budgeted for. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. So, all those in favor of purchase order 1680 say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank the class that we're going to send <coughs> Will to in New Jersey for the breach for the SWAT team has been canceled. Oh. So they're trying to re reschedule at some point, uh, hopefully in New Hampshire this time. Oh. So it'll be a little easier yeah. for all of us. But just to let you know. Uh, okay. If that's happened. That's all that I have for you. Anything for me? We have um, we have a non-public non -public yeah. personnel, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't have anything else, but Chief, anyone else? No. All right, so I'm ready. Is that the motion to go on a non-public session? I'll make a motion to go on a non-public session. Yes, personnel. Second that. All right, so move to second. We'll do roll call, Denise. Yes. Miles? Yes. Mike? Yes. We're in a non-public session to deal with a personnel issue. <laughs> he's not that lucky. He's not that lucky. No. He's just not feeling, he, he wasn't well last week either, so he's not, he's not. My headache is finally starting to go away, so he's, I don't know. Maybe the extra <coughs> pound will start to kick again, I don't know. All righty. So in lieu of uh, Mr. England having to leave, we are not going to uh, go into, um, anyway, anyways, go into uh, uh, workshop to deal with policies anyways. Um, so uh, the next thing we have on the agenda is building permit schedule of fees. So... Um, That's printed for you. Is it right That's here in front of me? Yes. Yeah, how, how about that Apple? So this is what Durham uses. And ah, yes. people here just wanted you to have a look at it and right. see that there's um, fees for different things. There are fees that we don't charge fees for. Right. Um, so it's not a proposal to change the fees. It's the what structure. We, yeah. Well, it, right. So primarily, we're, we're um, our fee structure is twenty five dollars plus ten dollars per thousand, and they're not proposing to change that, but maybe add these. You know. For reference, by the way, the, this is what you know Durham charges, mm -hmm. but also we don't charge for health inspector um, inspections and some of these other things. So, um, Mr. Clark just wanted you to look at this and review and consider adopting this document in a, in, in, um, revising it for all. To fit with the wrong turkey schedule. Right. I know that, um, so like for... Uh, what am I going to say? So for non-permitted, fee for non-permitted work, I think this is, um, this is actually very helpful. Uh, we currently, maybe we want to consider doing this actually. We don't have, um, I'm fine with, with, with keeping the, the fee structure, or the, the fees themselves where they are for right now, but this has been something that we've been, <laughs> we chase down people all the time for doing work without getting a building permit. Um, in fact, I drove by up on by, by your on the way up by your house mm -hmm. before you make the the hill around the corner. There's a sign out front for someone. I don't know. Or to roofing company. To, to, to do roofing, which I'm assuming means they're going to be showing up soon to do their roof. I don't. I remember seeing a building permit for them. Well, oh. we got we see the list. So, but maybe they have. But where is the list? It's on the drive. And okay. it's shared with you, and I okay. can certainly share it no, with don't. you. No, I will. I, I, prob I can go find it. I just wanted to make sure because I have not. Well, I mean, we sent a letter out to an individual because we saw action, but I see a lot of action happening, and I don't know if those people have it. Right. Mm. So, so you can email me addresses, and I can check, or you can check the, you know, the document 
yourself either way. Okay. No, I can I can check it because I know what the address is and stuff. But you know, if we're going to do one, we need to make sure that of we're course. cautious. Of course. If we're aware of them, yeah. Up. For sure. Well, when you have a dumpster in your yard, it's <laughs> yeah, kind of hard to that be aware of. Right. Happening. Right. Uh, you know? I'm not allowed. I'm just yes. Right. So you know, I, I'm just saying. Did we ever hear back from the one that we sent out? Yes. Okay. And she. I have to say that one letter, once upon a time, the person, it turned out, didn't really require a permit. But everybody else did require a permit, and they right. came in, and they got it, and did it, and people become compliant. And okay. that's right. really great. Good. So Good. Yeah. It, it is kind of a, you know, it's about equity. It, it mm -hmm. makes sure that our valuation, because it has right. assessing implications, mm -hmm. it makes sure right. that our assessments sure. stay yeah. equitable. But yeah. mostly people are good about it, and their contractors didn't know, or didn't check, sure. or they didn't know, or didn't check. So, or if it's just a little job, it does it have to have it, or you know? Or it started as a little job, and they thought it would be under the threshold. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just wanna, I just wanna make sure we're kind of fair and we're going after, because we saw something more active and. Right. That's all. Well, if we're aware I of something. I can go and look and see, and if I can't find it, then I'll ask you. We we always do send a letter yeah. if it's something we're aware of. Yeah. Okay. We, you know, you can't send letters to, letters to people that don't come to our attention. Mm -hmm. Right. But when things come to our attention, we check and we send letters. Uh, okay. Non-contract work. I think this is something that we might want to consider, seriously consider adopting. Because um, a lot of folks, the homeowner will do the work themselves, um, or or has a, a neighbor or a cousin or their father or whatever is a contractor, and they'll do the labor for free for them if they buy the materials. It happens, um, but there still are building um, fee implications to that, but perhaps not to the same level as if you hired a contractor. So I guess what is Durham? Durham is not the only town that I've seen it. I have been looking at other um, other um, examples, trying to see if this is a, a, maybe a problem in search of a solution or the other way around. But for non-contract work, such as when a homeowner furnishes his or her or has furnished free labor or purchases the materials. The fee shall be based on the actual cost of material with a multiplier of two applied. For example, for total materials of $5,000, 5,000 times two equals 10,000. The permit fee would be figured on $10,000 of valuation. You know, when there's a disagreement between the applicant and the building official when determining an appropriate fee, using uh, the methods, the building official shall then use the latest building valuation data report as published, blah, blah, blah. Which is so, typically what he uses now. That this permit fee will then be based on this assessment. So, I mean, because we'll, we, we'll have people like, oh, well, you know, I, I'm doing my own roof. They'll come in, and I only bought whatever it cost me at Home Depot or that lower wherever they bought them. This maybe not so much in the last couple of years, but when I first got here, people, a lot, we had a number of people doing that, doing the roofing themselves. Like, well, you're telling me it cost 10000 but if that's what it would cost if I hired someone, clearly it didn't cost me that because there's my receipt for materials I bought, and I'm doing it myself. So we just sort of, I don't remember, I wasn't in charge of issuing the permits at that time. I don't remember how it was resolved, but this is very clear. You know, and so it's a, it's a standard approach, which I like personally. I don't it, like it. It's clear on, though, it's clear only on it if it's outside, not if it's inside. Well, it, it, gives the, well, it gives the homeowner some idea of how to fill out that value. Because right. if it's something they're doing themselves, it's, we can figure out a value because, as it says, you know, the building code formulas, like they mm -hmm. say, right. for decks, it's X number of dollars per square foot. Mm -hmm. Tom has that chart, and, and right. he would apply a value. But somebody should be presenting a value when they fill out the building permit. And that would give a homeowner some kind of guideline, whether it's inside or outside work, that they bought X number of dollars worth of materials. Mm -hmm. But it would be hard to find those who aren't coming and doing this on inside projects. Oh, yeah, no, no. Um, well, when so they sell their homes, right. well, we that. notice that there are pictures of really fancy inside. Right. Yeah, we yeah. Didn't work this, this, yeah. Is, this is yeah. not going to stop the people that are, are just not going to fill the form. But you're right. right. That, that's not going to. But we do have a lot of very earnest people in town mm -hmm. that fill out these forms, and they'll say, oh, it's only $500 worth of value because that's what it costs them in materials. Mm -hmm. They're doing the work. Well, that's the material cost, but it's not really what the, the actual yeah. value yeah. is. And yeah. so this is a, at least has a standard. This is a standard. maybe this isn't the right formula, but at least it's a standard formula that helps guide them. And I like that. I like more specificity in the building permit process because then it becomes more uniform. Yes. And that's what we strive for. Just like you said, if we see just because you know I notice a neighbor doing something, 
you know, and then maybe I don't I like don't like that one, I do like this one, you mm -hmm. know. And they're both doing the same work. Well, both of them should be getting a building permit. Mm -hmm. So um, so again it just is more equity I think within the process. We don't have to adopt it tonight, but I thought it was nice that they um, they were both thinking about this and brought it forward for us. So And you can consider different dollar amounts. It's yeah. something that can you know about over time. Just because it works for Durham doesn't mean that's the, that's the amount that would work for Durham. Sure. And, and certainly, you know, there are a lot of categories and we don't have to share all the same categories and things like that, but no. um, they wanted you to consider. Like, I don't know why they charge so much for a driveway building permit. I mean, that's, uh, that's, well, so that's because of the planning perspective and making sure that you are, so you have to bring the road agent out to mm -hmm. um, Consider so this is so this is more for, for the well. If you're putting a new one in, right? So yeah, it must if you already be. have an existing one. All you're putting is in. Right, all you're doing is well, so that's that's, that's an interesting point because it has to it has to meld with our zoning ordinance because right. currently with the zoning ordinance you need a broad, you need a building permit per driveway, um, but maybe it's not fair to call that you know, about the material cost, mm -hmm. you know, the construction cost of that. Maybe this is a more equitable fee, particularly if it exists already. Mm -hmm. um, but if for new driveways, though, you really ought to That's have... part of the planning process, and there's already fees associated with all that, right? That's part of the filing fees, I'm assuming. It's all being reviewed under that It is if it's a subdivision, um, but if you have a single... You're right, probably. I, mean, I, I, I'm not, I can somehow I'm thinking of situations that I don't think went through planning, but at the, particularly like second and third, you know, like multiple drive, you know, you want to yeah. access the back of your lot, so you install another egress, you know. So then that would be this might be a good category for that one. Putting in a new driveway that way, separate from a building, from a normal building permit. Well, but I mean. You know, it, it's something that consultants want to zone or that's about because maybe it, maybe it doesn't make sense the way we currently do yeah. driveways. Something to think about, for sure. I don't know. Yeah, but it's something. Yeah, we we should think about is is. So like we we currently in septic septic room. We currently was it the fifty dollar or twenty five dollar fee for septic? Twenty five. Twenty five. Well, is that that's not on our application, is it currently? No, so, actually. So it, that's like this, would be good to add that on. I mean, yes, it would be. Sign permits, including sidewalk signs. So if someone wants to put a sandwich board out in Durham, it costs you 25 bucks apparently. For the building inspector to come by and say, yeah, that's a sandwich board on the sidewalk. Wow. Interesting. Anyways. So if somebody to consider. Um, the demolition, we, we currently don't charge for demolition, right. or maybe we right. do only if it has utilities, it doesn't happen a lot. Um, I think it does with utilities. It does with utilities. So this one is yeah. just flat. What does that mean, it does with utilities? So if you have a single family home that's yeah. hooked up to water and sewer, yeah. then you, you demo the home, it costs $50 because you have to make sure the utilities are shut off properly. Oh. Um, and but if you're demoing a barn that was never hooked up to utilities, yeah. then there's no permit fee for that. Or shed or whatever. We still require a permit, but there's no fee because we want to have log the change to the property. Okay. Yeah, it's your advantage. Right. Because it lowers your assessment. To get rid of the structure. Yeah. Yes, it's very dark out there. God, it's creepy out there. It's very dark and light at the same time, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. An eerie glow. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's get through this then, before the sky is open. So we can, it, we don't have to uh, take action on this. I did want us to talk about it and start thinking about it. Because I think a lot, some of these changes make a lot of sense to help streamline the, uh, in the process and to make them more equitable across the town. So, um, again, I think that's what we should always be striving for. So but we'll put that on hold for now. All right, employee recognition dinner. So we've heard back from the school. Um, if we if we use their refrigerator or their freezer, um, and if we want to use their kitchen, which I guess I should have just left with that, not the refrigerator or whatever, um, we need to have with a staff member present. And perhaps even two. Perhaps because two. Because the kitchen right. person wants to be there. That's, that's what I'm also, talking about. But you may also need, need a custodian, custodian too. if you're going to so, not eat in the kitchen. I'm not sure that um, the, the school is probably the best place to do it at this point. 
it's the nicest place. But I just I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. Sure. I don't think we have enough time to have it the the week that we uh, I mean it takes a long time to plan an event of this size right. and and also the weekend that we had picked is the first part of Fourth of July week. And you may okay. have some conflicts with people not you being able to do it later in the summer. I'm just saying we need to have a little more time to to work on it because yeah. I mean we haven't talked about anything about the dinner mm -hmm. or or um, any of that kind of stuff yet. So I I don't know. That's, okay. that's my opinion. I mean I've just done enough dinners with right. the fire department sure. and you know um, it, it it takes a lot of planning and and it's a lot of money too and I'm not sure where we're going to get that from. So. Um, Okay, so do we want to postpone it then until the fall? But we should pick a date then. Give it towards the fall or later in the summer then? No, no, I would suggest not further into the summer itself because you're going to lose, you never, you know, everybody takes right. vacations at different yeah. times. Um, so then, yes, I would say fall you have more. September ish? Or yeah, or or something. Okay. Do you know what your departure date is? No. Do you know what the month of your departure date is? Sometime this summer. This summer. Okay. Before uh, the dinner. So, um, I would, well, you, you all can pick a date then, but maybe. I wouldn't do it well, the like first week of September because that's Labor Day. No, no, no. I sometimes. Okay. Um, when is uh, Family Fun Day? I don't know the date yet because okay. the date's not available to me. Oh, okay. For the, the date I wanted. All right. Well, then you don't, uh, yeah. Because okay. I'm looking to have Sundays now. Oh, really? Yeah. They've got weddings. Good for them. I mean, yeah, no, their business is booming, but um, my options are So Sundays. Saturdays are out then? Yeah. Even in August? Um, we didn't have very good success in the summer months. I was so going to ask you that. It was later, right? It was. It, yeah. yeah you okay. know, we always do September, the third week of September. Um, but when we did it in August, we did not have very good um, participation. Right. So we would rather stay. We're probably going to go into early October. Okay. So, so then you have options for September, right? We did it then. I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, the third week of September, I'm not available. I mean, we talk about it again when Miles comes in. Well, we are running out of time. That's the problem. Yeah. We kept, um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, and then I saw the school thing, and I just kind of. Yeah, sure I think you're. What they were you're, worried about. Yeah, I'm not sure either, but I think you're probably your best bet's going to be at the fire station. That's, I mean, because there's a kitchen there. They have plenty of tables that they use for the um, pancake breakfast. I'd like to kind of get a feel of a head count because, again, yeah. you can't plan a, a menu if you don't know how many people are going to come. When, when you don't want to overcook or undercook or whatever you're going to do. Right. And so um, I'd like to um, maybe talk to each of the department heads and see if they can put a sign up sheet of some sort and kind of give them a Time right. and see, you know, how many people are. Cause, I mean, I don't even know how many employees we have total at the transfer well, station. You, you could, you could leave it if you want just an employee count. I can give you an employee count and you can double it. Well, yeah. Uh, for you mean for all three departments? Yeah. Okay. All right. If you can at least start there, and then we would have to have them confirm whether or not they're going to come. So then you can right. modify your. But we can start with the count because that gives you that's the most. Yeah, that's yeah. the most. Because and then yeah. you know yeah, and then um, you can plan for not more than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a place to start. And then based on that you can pick a date. So let's leave the let's leave the date alone for now. Let me if you give me that, I will work on it and come up with a plan and see what we can do. Okay. All right. Yeah. And see, you know, I am a little concerned about that weekend only because it's the first weekend of the holiday, which is like the most popular holiday week. A lot of people take that week off. So, but um, 
we could go deeper into the water a little bit um, once you get away from that weekend. But yeah, if you give me the total employee count, and I will come up with some thoughts. Okay. What's your name? Okay. Uh, gas expansion. Do we have a letter in here? You do. And you must follow it here. So, um, Unitil, right? Uh, Unitil was in last week uh, representing Northern Utilities, which is part of Unitil. Uh, they would like to expand service in Rollins, certainly like a letter of support from the select board. They don't need to have it, but they would like to have one, um, which I think we would probably want, if there are customers that want the service, they might want to occur it here. If this is just the first step in a uh, very lengthy process. They have to go through the planning process for the, for the PUC, so it's not a done deal. It's just whether or not we want um, options of the residents that may want options for, uh, for their utilities. It's not binding in any fashion. Nope. Right? I mean, it's just saying that. And PUC could say, nope, sorry, you don't get to do it. Yeah. Which, I don't yeah. know why they would, but they, could, they certainly could not. Want me to sign this? Make a motion. Have it as a motion. Sure, let's do that. I'll we'll make a motion that we sign the letter um, supporting the uh, gas expansion in our own spirit with the tell. Okay, I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Wish them the best of luck. This is their endeavors. Um, that back on the he, he knows what he says. He says. just needs a signature. Just need it? a signature on that. From last week. Yeah. All right. This is the um, the uh, uh, 2019 uh, pay rate for the police chief, uh, showing the um, uh, increase. Um, it wasn't. It was because it's a separate line. It was separate from um, all the other officers, and so the chief got a three percent. Same as his uh, officers of, of a base merit, not merit. Yeah. Um, uh, cost of living. Mm -hmm. right. uh, merit is for the officers. Yeah. All right. That's that. Gas expansion we did, we're not going to do the policy reviews. I'd like to have Miles here. Um, uh, the one you were going to talk, we were going to talk about this evening was the um, uh, rules of procedure and policies for the select board. So it would be nice to have everyone here, especially those of you that are going to be voting for them. So. All right, so we have standing activities, board member activities. Elise, what do you have going on? Um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> a rare occasion. I don't think I don't think I have rec. I have to get that confirmed. We just did a lot of rec. You yeah, we just did a lot of rec. Yeah, so I I'm I have a quiet week. Thank goodness. All right, I need it. Perfect. Yeah, I went. Um, we had a, a cemetery cleanup this weekend. The first parish cemetery. So I'm here just for a minute. How'd that go? Good. It was good. It was the beginning. It's we're gonna need another probably day or two. We did. Um, Pulled out a lot of um, uh, down limbs and brush like that, um, and we have a lot of leaves to, to take out. We took out uh, four or five bags, uh, so we, need, we filled up an entire uh, Mark Kucher's um, trailer mm -hmm. full of <laughs> tree limbs and things. So, um, so it's going to be a, another weekend. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's um, the first uh, town clerk for uh, the town of Summersworth. Which Rollinson was part of, is buried there. Dr. Carr, Moses Carr, mm -hmm. and um, also to speak. I'm really impressed with the uh, Hill Cemetery folks, too, along with their new landscaping. Yeah, they're doing a nice job. They did a really good job. Yeah. Looks nice. So that's what so. I did for part of my day yesterday. So I think that's. Yeah. But, uh, and 
anything else. What did we? Something else met last week. CBA. No, that was historical, correct? CBA met last week, and um, did they, they approve the exemption of that fine? Um, special exception. Special exception. Yes. Was there anything else on the agenda? That was the only thing on the agenda, right? That's a yes. proper Yes. It was very, it was a three to two vote. There was a lot of contention and, and decision and discussion, and they worked hard to get to that. Um, so it's, it's going to go forward? It's going to go forward. Allow a duplex so, to be built off of an easement without any road, without enough road frontage on the so, side of the cliff. So what they learned is that you cannot apply zoning to a non-conforming lot because it predates zoning as a non-conforming lot. So a property owner has the right to develop a lot in some way. So they have the right to bring forward a proposal, and if it doesn't work, they can bring, you know, it doesn't pass, they can bring forward another proposal. But you can't say that you can't develop a parcel. Otherwise, it's really upon the town to buy that parcel from them if it has no value. And so it was when the conversation got to that point that I think the dynamic on the board flipped because they could have come to the ZBA and asked for two single-family dwellings. But that would have encroached on wetlands, and it would have had a bigger footprint, and it would have had more traffic. And so one person realizing that that would have been the alternative um, flipped and voted for it. because it, So it's a duplex on what will be a combined, still non-conforming lot, but it'll, have, it'll at least not encroach on the wetlands, and it'll be less traffic than than the alternative. Mm -hmm. And if you if you you know favor this over encroaching on the wetlands mm -hmm. and a bigger footprint. Um, yeah. So now where does it go? Does it go to the planning board? It or goes is it to done? planning it, it okay. goes to planning point. again for because it's now it's got its non conforming lot approved. Well right. So so the idea got approved. The the planning board can put more conditions mm -hmm. and such on it. But um, mm -hmm. The process still ahead of them, but the idea and concept is approved. How did um, Carlton make out? Did he go? Um, he has not submitted an application no. yet, oh, okay. but intends to. There's there's a few more things coming up to CBA. Yeah. He'll be busy this year. And I'm wondering if you're, maybe he wasn't there, maybe he was with the planning or something. He was here, I don't recall if that was last. He came to see us a couple of weeks. But then he came the next day. But then he went the, the next, next day to the planning board. Oh, was, and, um, yeah. And, and they said Adrian was on. Yes. Which is what we told. Yes. It was, it was a very similar conversation, Mr. Hinsman, um, after about two years of deliberating over that project, did not want to, he was not eager to undo it all. He didn't mm -hmm. see a point in that. He was also um, very professional in handling the situation, letting the applicant know that um, it's not a duly published meeting, so they, they for, for that application, right. it's not really an application yet. So with no abutters present to express mm -hmm. how they feel about things, you really have to be careful not to relay feelings about how you might handle a case. Mm -hmm. So um, he let them speak and just said CBA. Yeah. They will be doing that. Alright. Do we have, um, we start with the folder. What folder do you want to start with? Oh, okay. We're there. Okay. We're there. Alright, we have a. Oh, we quite, sorry, we're not. We didn't do um, uh, your update, Carolyn. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Yep. So, I think um, you're giving part of it. So. We're, getting, we're finishing assessing. We're finalizing all the updates to assessing. Tax bills are going out at the end of next week. The newsletter is getting finalized. So we're there with those processes. The exemption of credits have been entered into the system. Um, so that's coming along. Other than that, there's stormwater um, Wednesday night reviewing the potential for the grant opportunity and looking at um, sending out mailings. But um, Paul Cazal came in last week, I guess, and Friday. Friday. We had a good conversation about um, 
next steps and action items, and he's really doing a fantastic job, I have to say, um, working with the state and the, and the local committee and keeping us on track. So um, once we get this new position higher, we've got interviews this week starting tomorrow afternoon and then Wednesday afternoon for the bookkeeper mm -hmm. um, position. And then once we get that up and running, I'll, I'll help carry some of Paul's stormwater load because he's been carrying really more than we should be asking for volunteer for right. something so highly regulated. So it's coming along. Okay. We're doing interviews on Tuesday and Wednesday? Right? Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, Wednesday afternoon. Yes. And I have emailed you the resumes of everybody for both days, mm -hmm. as well as interview questions. Um, if you want to add anything. Well, I think what I'll do is I'll review them for tomorrow. Um, maybe tonight. And I'll give you a call. What time are the interview starting tomorrow? Noon. Tomorrow looks like from, I don't know if it'll be really well enough. It's a long afternoon. Yeah, it's not Yeah. Uh, I have a meeting uh, at work from 10.30 to noon. So. If you can get here after and miss a few of them, that's great. Otherwise, I would prefer to carry on because I'm concerned about people. I don't want to have to reschedule all those people. Uh, and, and lose them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, What time is the last one scheduled? Four, four maybe? I'm not sure. They, they go they go in 45 minute intervals starting at noon. Exactly. Alright, so I'll, I'll go to that meeting in the morning and then I'll come over and do your hand. Text me before you leave and um, <laughs> hopefully I will have spoken to Miles and see Okay, yeah. I mean, Miles is different. He's feeling better and he can, he can make it in. Great, but if not, okay. And um, I'll definitely be here on Tuesday, on Wednesday. We're starting at what time on Wednesday? Actually, there's not anyone for the first slot, so I think 2:15. But you have the sheet. You have you have the full schedule. Oh, it's in your okay. email. All right, perfect. Okay. All right. We'll get that tonight. All right. Anything else? In the okay. Room? So. I'm oh, sorry. Don't be uh, I'm all yeah, set. She's all done. Okay. Um, this is a letter from you to um, Andrea and Joseph Anderson about a pool installation. Oh, for funding for you. What? Meeting a pool building. installation. Meeting a building permit right. for folks. Yes, if you're putting in a pool, you need a building permit. So that is Townsend's um, proposal for the town boiler. It's actually two different proposals. Both are, I believe both are cast iron. It's the first one. I, I want to look at that. There are components of the first one that are. The Baderas boiler is, is a cast iron. I think they both are. But um, I forwarded the email to you this I, afternoon. I read too. them again to, to see what the... Um, and I want to. Um, we can follow ask follow up questions too, if you. Yeah, I, I want to do a little more research on the first option. I mean, my my gut reaction is to go with Baderas because it's a much better boiler. But I want to make sure that the size. That, I mean, they've come in and they've taken a look at the facility and what the size they're suggesting, right? It, it's going to be sufficient. I just want to make sure that because the, the 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 cursory for research I did today, this is one of their larger boilers. Badera said it. So it's not the largest, but it's certainly um, more powerful than what's down there currently. So, um, but I would like to look at, I don't know enough about the other, um, I, I the other manufacturer. I the manufacturer pamphlets. I, 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 you have I, in your email. Yeah, I know, and I looked at them, but I'd like to do, um, I, I like looking at what the companies have to say about their product, but I'd also like to do, um, Sure. Do some reviews. Look, look yeah. for review, online reviews. 
And I know the reputation of Baderas and, and, and how they're you know, one of the, 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 the best boilers you can buy. So, um, but um, they can be um, clearly Townsend is installing it, so they'll have someone that can uh, maintain it. They're sort of specialized, so I can't remember my reading list, I can't look up and down. Um, if you have, you have to have someone that actually knows how to maintain that specific type of system. It's not like a normal, just a boiler or you know HVAC system. They're sort of specialized. But if they're installing it, clearly they have someone that can do that. So, but, so I guess that's my long-winded way of saying I don't want to vote on uh, on this tonight. So I want to do a little more research. Oh, I started to today, but I, I don't have. I want to I want to be able to answer a few more questions in my mind. And, so if anyone asks, well, why did you definitely go with this company mm -hmm. versus the other one? I want to be able to answer all the questions as best as I can. But anyways, there's a few outstanding things in my head that I want to be able to answer. But that's all right. Okay. But it needs to be done. I want to make sure that quote is still, we also want to make sure those quotes are still valid. So. I, I thought it was on hold. Um, it's all up for discussion. Okay. All right, I have a purchase order um, for SHI, purchase order number 1635 for how many computers? Well, so, uh, so that's the conversation. Is So the, the quote attached is for three computers and one monitor. I didn't fill out one on the purchase order because I wasn't sure if you would be ready to do that whole thing. So to do the whole thing, that whole quote would be $1,000 over budget. We budgeted to um, replace one computer right. this year. Mm -hmm. um, but Tom LaBelle is concerned because all the front office computers are using Microsoft's uh, um, Windows 7, which is no longer going to be supported. Mm -hmm at the end of January. Right. So um, Kate's computer is acting up and should be replaced sooner rather than later. You can do the one computer. Um, SHI is the vendor that Tom finds gives us the best discounts mm -hmm. for government. Um, okay. They have better and different um, discounts for the school. He uses them for there as well. Um, these are better prices than he thought he was going to get. They seem to be having a May sale. So um, he thought it would be $300 more than that. So to do the whole thing would be $1,000 over budget. But you can also well, wait. Where's the other two computers going to be? Um, the DMV computer and Andrea's computer. And what's wrong with hers? They're old. It's just that oh, okay. it's just that they're old and due to be replaced, but also that they are running Windows 7. So it would be he would prefer to, since they're old anyway, mm -hmm. to replace them rather than install a patch because it also takes a lot more time to install a patch. So and, and you know, it's a little bit more precarious on an older computer. So it's a DMV computer. It's Andrea's computer. And what's the third one? Kate's. Oh, Just so computer. what's wrong with the DMV computer? Only that it's old. The it's only not that it's old. So oh, okay. Andrea's computer and the DMV computer are not currently having any issues, except that they're running Windows 7, which is soon to be no longer supported. So he which means it will run. It just won't, if something happens, you can't get support for it. Um, he's more concerned about security risks. He would rather patch them and not wait. So it's not an immediate issue because it's, you know, they are supported until the end of January, um, which is a different budget year if you do it right away. Um, but you're getting better pricing right now yeah. by doing the three of them. So you pay more if you wait versus... So, you know, you can handle it either way. But um, your best course of action is to do at least one of them because Kate is acting up. Yeah. Your desk computer. Okay, so you have a new computer. I do. And, and the what Windows, what Windows do you have? And I've got 10, you and the 10. assessing one is new, and it has 10. Okay. So it's just those three, and then we don't even have to budget for a new computer next year because they're all new. Okay, so the assessing one is new? Yes. Is that the one that the, the new hire is going to be? Would use that one. one. Well, okay. so we should still have something 
we, we had talked about a computer for the board to use. It could be perhaps an old computer, mm -hmm. but really the um, the assessing computer and the bookkeeper computer should not ultimately be the same computer. We can mm -hmm. get by on it for now, mm -hmm. but there are there's enough activity to happen on the assessing computer that um, we're going to have conflicts with one workstation mm -hmm. with two different needs. Mm -hmm. So I, I would hope that's a temporary situation, and for that reason, maybe we are going to um, try to budget for a new computer next year. We'll see how scheduling works out with this new person mm -hmm. and how that works out with assessing and, and like that. So can we possibly just budget for the new one for the assessing? Can you take like Andrea's and bring it in here on a temporary basis and then? Tom doesn't want any of the new computers running without a, like he would say no. I mean, it, it's, it's up to you, of course. He's advising that you either replace the old ones or that you run the Windows 10 patch. But to do the Windows 10 patch is going to, there's a cost for that software update, but then it's going to take him more time, like three or How four hours. The is? They're, everything up there is four years old, which is about as old as he would want them to ever be. Okay, so we have... For IT software and services, which this is going to come under, right? Uh, we have budgeted um, $10,640. And so Google comes out of that, um, right. his time comes out of that. Right. There was one computer budgeted for $1,000. Yeah, so this is $2,000. So if you were to do the whole thing. Right. Yes. But also, tax um, clerk's um, budget is going to come. Like, you have some clicks in there too that you could be allocate money for it, right? Because okay, of elections. Because of elections. Yeah. Well, that got taken out though. Yeah, yeah but that, that she has it. savings in her. If she's not going to have any more elections, there's savings in the election line. Yes. So we could move that to the computer line. You can move money around anyway. Well, I know, Absolutely. but, but we know yes. nothing's going to happen on that line. Yes. So there's some there's potential savings there that we could move it. I would say we just should just do all three of them then. And, and, um, so did you move purchase order? I haven't, did I? I don't know. Um, you did, but without a total. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because if you're getting a really good price, next year it's going to be higher for sure. Okay. So... I'm moving purchase order 1635 for 2052 dollars for three computers, one monitor, and a Belkin display port, whatever that is, for one of them as cable. well. Yeah, it's yeah. for cable. So. Uh, any other discussion? Okay. Purchase orders. No, it's not that. Or another one. Oh. We'll hold off on Dover for a moment. Purchase order 1635 has been moved and second. Any other discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So we the computers that will be able to be used and um, safely uh, monitored by Mr. LaBelle and installed so that we don't have to worry about security issues. All right. So. I have a purchase order 1614 for the city of Dover for uh, vehicle repairs to a engine one and tank one coolant leak repair and a heater control repair. The total is two thousand two hundred and seventy-four eighty-six to the city of Dover. All right. Second it. Any discussion on purchase order sixteen fourteen? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 I have in here. All right, so the first thing we have in here is a uh, uh, deed of burial plot is number 19-01 to uh, Michael and Lilia, L-I-L-L-I-A, Missouri. Um, the amount of uh, $350. It's two, uh, two graves. We just have to sign off on Yeah. 
All right, what do we got here? Animal population control program fees. This is an advisory to the tip from the town clerk. Um, this is to certify that during the period of May 1, 2018 to April 30th, 2019, I issued 538 dog licenses as town clerk in accordance with the provisions of RSA 466-4, Roman 1, subsection B, and section uh, AGR 28004-02, that's the state agricultural rules. I'm enclosing here with the sum of $1,076, representing $2 for each license issued by me in the mentioned time period. So, uh, what else we got here? During May, issued 538. Oh, sorry. So, so dog license fees from. We collect them on behalf of the state. The state. That's the state's portion right. of the fee. And so, from May 1st, 2018 to April 30th, 2019, she's certifying that she issued 538 dog licenses. And in accordance with the uh, provisions of RSA 466.9, Roman 2, I am enclosing here with the sum of $269, representing 50 cents for each license issued by me also. Um, that must be for different things. Obviously, it doesn't say what, but one goes for two different programs, apparently. One's for population control and one's for fees. So the total that the town clerk has to mail the state is $1,345. It's just advisory, so everyone understands that's where your money goes. Are we going and, to sign it? No. We have to sign this, though, which I wish I'd seen it underneath, or we just read this. So I'm going to move purchase order 1721. Although, should it be a purchase order, or should it be a... I don't know what it is. Sorry. It's to pay the state. Uh, the $1,345, it really should be a uh, disbursement, shouldn't it? But we have this, so next time, for next year, if we want to let her know. So I've moved for purchase order 1721 to, this US, to the State Department of Agriculture. I'll second it. I'll second it. All right, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, me too. All right, so we will pay the state their dog fees. Sell those nice books that are the plot. There's a purchase order behind it. Ah. <laughs> this is a <laughs> this is the note from the State Department of Motor Vehicles to let our town clerk know that. The state was kind enough to um, oh. issue us a Lexmark T640 uh, printer that is owned and maintained by the state of New Hampshire. The T640 printer is at the end of life and there are no plans at this time to offer replacements. So basically they're telling us we've got to buy our own printer. Right, so she, I advised her to have a purchase order filled out just so that she would have the authority to buy one right. the minute she needed one. Okay. It, it is still operational. Right, but still. If we're going to be able to issue uh, again another non-budget item, correct. This would it's, be an unfunded mandate. It's an unfunded mandate, is what it is. The state is saying you shall have this printer, but we are no longer going to provide it for you without any notice, by the way. Do you have to return the one that you have? That's not clear. Oh. <laughs> I, I well, I don't know if she's had it. Is it she, she was going to look into that. I don't know what the answer to that is. Representative Chase know that our displeasure with the State Department of Motor Vehicles. Not that Paul Wendy can do anything about it, but anyways. Um, all right, well, we need a printer. <laughs> so well, it doesn't mean that the money will up be to, spent. Up to, it, they have, uh, up to the amount of $1,000. Does she have to buy this from a special place? I mean, it's not something Tom can get her? or. Um, I don't know. And actually, why don't you hold it? If, does it, does it have a vendor in mind? I don't know that it, it does. So my guess is she doesn't have a vendor listed, which negates the idea of a, a purchase order. Uh, computer Hut, it says. Oh, okay. So why don't so. we read through here just to see. It says here that, um, so this letter from, from DMV is saying that um, these are your requirements that you have to have. There are, like, the size of the tray that the paper goes in, all of these yeah. things. There are, how many? 
Before we approve this, can we just have Tom look and see if it's something that you can get cheaper? I think that's worthwhile. Okay, so why is course of it? He was she was, here, she was discussing with this with him. Yeah. I don't know if they've had the conversation about having SHI quote it or not. Um, okay, but I so think one more week. It can wait. One well, more. it can absolutely wait because it's still functional. It's yeah. just something to have in place for when she needs it, so that we're not down for a period of time. Mm -hmm. So she's on a listserv of um, town other town clerks that are also DMV mm -hmm. agents. Um, and they've listed one, two, three, four, five different printers that different towns use mm -hmm. that meet all of the requirements okay. that the state requires the printer meet. So I think that's what she's basing it off of. But I mean, well, did she I pick a particular one of those? And I'm, you know, like maybe Tom could evaluate what the, what the cheapest of those five options is less. at which vendor. Yeah, let's just hold off it. In my opinion, let's hold off and see if what could, Tom can do. So for us. if you could put it back in the red folder, I'll have a conversation. Okay. About it. Okay. I mean, so here's the thing that I just want to make sure we're aware of. We're not meeting next Monday, so for some reason the printer. It's well, their printer until the end of June. Oh. But they're not replacing them. We've already said it doesn't matter if it breaks down or not. Oh, really? Them, so. I thought we were good until the end of June. I don't, no. No. I don't think we're going to get a printer until the end of June with all the right software. And, just don't um, I, I think we, I put it's back unexpended, I mean, it's an un, unbudgeted thing. I think we should at least do our due diligence to check the pricing with Tom. So we need to sign the, uh, the tax levy um, for um, oh, this the 2019. Uh, to Andrea Cass, collector of taxes for Rollins from New Hampshire and said county, Stratford. In the name of the state, you are hereby directed to collect the property taxes. In the list here with committed to you, amounting to the sum of three million three hundred and eighty two thousand seven hundred and eighty three dollars and with interest at eight percent per annum from July 1, 2019 thereafter on all sums not paid on or before that day. We further order you to remit all monies collected to the town treasurer or the town treasurer designee, uh, at least on a weekly basis or daily whenever tax receipts total over a thousand five hundred dollars or more. So it's the um, is the tax levy the tax warrant um, to cover what we're past it? So, so the, the board has to approve the total tax bill that is about to go out. That's what that is. Oh, okay. And it covers what was approved at town meeting. Okay. For this, this the new, the July bill. Or June, depending on what it had Sign off on it so she can send them a text. What's the dollar amount? Three million three hundred. Three three eight two okay. seven eight three. Got it. What's this interest thing about? So if you don't pay your taxes on, on by the due date, then the town charges you for is it nine percent? Eight. Eight. Eight percent interest on uh, the overdue amounts. Who is this from? From us. She drafted it for you, but it's oh. like for you to sign. So she has used the assessing software to calculate this amount, and you need to sign off on the idea that she's about to issue tax bills that total this oh, amount. So we're sending this letter to yes. her, but she yes. wrote it to her. Okay, yes. got she it. She handles she handles the letter, drafting the letter for us. Got it. And had always had. I mean, the prior tax collector, I'm sure. Well, yes. Okay. But this is the formality we have to say you're you you have to collect this yep. tax. Yes. Okay. On our behalf. Yes. Uh, it is a little it, 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 is, it does, exactly. <laughs> but and it's it's the nature of your position. Right. And, and, and it corresponds to the amount of money that we need to raise based on um, what was approved at town. Okay. And then we have to deal with the other half of the tax here. Okay, so we have two more. Uh, deed of burial lot, we have, um, I don't want to come with these numbers, okay. Um, this one is number NT08-0890. But 
going that way. for the county of Stratford, the consideration paid here by grant, and their heirs, successors, successors rather, and assigns forever one lot of land of the town to New Town Cemetery. It's for four. Well, I can't tell you how much this work is not on here. This one had it. This one had it. So, so that's how I know. Send it back. Well, I, I don't want to hold anything up, but well, what's this one? I'm not going to sign it if it doesn't have a dollar on it. Oh, wait, I think that they already own them. They've already purchased them. This is a, just a signing. Okay. So there were four, there are net four graves within this, this plot that this family has purchased. One, so number of graves is four, it's the, it's the same last name. One is uh, section 08B, one is section 08C. So it must be assigning um, ownership of these. So they're, they're, they're also owners. Because they're different names. They're also owners of, of lots that have already been sold. That's why. Okay. I, I we'll get there eventually. <laughs> I'm sure this is not the first time I've seen one of these either, but I apologize. I just, I, anyways, they've already been purchased. They're just assigning. We should let these poor people have nice people have, to let them have, have their, their final resting place. Yeah. And not worry about it. Their mark has a little under control. <laughs> and overly complicated things. And that's it. And this red folder, I think. So both of those were 0808. Oh, I'm sorry. And the second 08, one is 0808B and 0808C. NT in front of it. Yeah. So the only thing that was different is one is 08C and one is 08B, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And there's uh, there's um, names listed on the. I'll just send it back over so you can see it. I think maybe it was a separation. The plots that they own already is just assigning okay. yeah. to the individuals. I don't know the circumstances. I think. Mercifully, it is uh, the end of the evening. Any other community input? Are we ready for that? Are we, are we good? We don't have any non public goods or anything like that. No welfare? Okay. Any other community input for the evening? Then by consensus, we are adjourning at 8.31 p.m. Have a guy nice time. Have a safe Memorial Day weekend. No. And a safe Memorial Day weekend. Oh, thank you.